Hello, people of the internet. Tomb Raider 3 is a difficult game. It holds the reputation of being the worst in this respect. There is no such thing as a difficulty curve and the level design was conceived based on the feedback the developers had from the two previous games. Because these players were whom the game was addressed to originally, Tomb Raider 3 must be understood in relation to the other two and your knowledge of the game has to be thorough enough if you want to complete it. So the criteria I decided to use to determine what the hardest levels in Tomb Raider 3 were, were the following ones. They include their level design and layout, the puzzles and platforming stages, the enemies and how strong they are in comparison with Lara, but also when the levels intervene in the game structure and the context in which they were revealed to the public. Think of it as another psychological experiment. Now, let's begin. Let's start with a level that will cause you to rack your brain. River Thames. Big barges, full of yellow hay, are moored against the shadowy wharf. And like a yellow silken scarf, the thick fog hangs along the quay. What could go wrong? Well, in Tomb Raider 3, Thames Wharf is far from poetry and way more puzzling in many respects. Wow. Here's the perfect example of what some players would call a confusing layout. Right from the start, the level emphasizes verticality and makes the best of what was then new moves for Lara, like crawling, for example. The vertical setting is so captivating that you probably missed the first secret because there's nothing linear in this level. I'll make your ass linear. It takes you about five minutes to reach the secret because it is all about jumping and platforming. C. Making the best of Lara's moves and when everything begins to make sense after the rooftop and chimney section, the player has two puzzles to crack. A water puzzle, that is, a scaled down version of Tomb Raider 1 system, and a robot crate puzzle, which a few people complained about when the game came out, provided you survived the rooftops and did not use them to hang yourself. What kind of joke is this? A long time ago, there was a demo called Jungle. This was the demo for Tomb Raider 3. At first, the level is just as much a decoration as the deck was in Tomb Raider 2 because you have to get through that door over there and you have to skirt the quicksands and take a long, 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 long detour. Considering Jungle was the first level in the game, it was definitely in contradiction with the first two games, which had more linear levels used as tutorial. Tomb Raider 3 is not called Tomb Raider 3 for nothing. It takes as granted stuff you thought you were the only one to know in the previous games and it was designed to test your skills. Many players were so unused to such brutality that the perspective of not being cuddled and being confronted to their own skills just frightened them off. Now they hate the game and they hold the ugly textures responsible for it. It's like a Rubik's Cube, you cannot complete it, so you're gonna say, hey, this thing was poorly designed, get real. You're not a player. Sorry I must be the one to tell you that, but it's Tomb Raider, not Angry Birds, goddammit. The jungle is so digressive, but it's not a digression like the deck in Tomb Raider 2. Jungle, however, is different from the deck, and speedrunners know that, as there's a way to skip the level if you are really, really good at this. It's a test of skills, and it rewards players spending time on it. If you thought the level was difficult, then wait for the rest. Temple Ruins was almost included in this list, but I decided to include a Lost Artifact level instead. You thought the Great War of China and the Temple of Xi'an were too difficult because of their timed sections with a lot of traps? Then you should try Willet's Lair in The Lost Artifact. All levels in The Last Artifact are quite spicy enough to make it challenging for veteran players, but this one is particularly notable. Concerning level design, some might say, It's cunty. Cunty. Looking at you, game statistics, but I see it in a different light. A bit like Jungle, the designers made the best of the level geometry, and there is move ball. The quantity of traps makes it so that you don't have any second to waste. And that's the moment when controlling Lara becomes difficult because the player needs to be accurate and able to anticipate on her moves. See this trap room? You don't have to go there. 
because TR3 often has multiple paths, but it's worse than a jigsaw puzzle. This quote is just a reference to the Divine Comedy. Tomb Raider's tribute to Dante is perhaps not as famous as Final Fantasy VI's, but it surely pays homage to this superb text. If the first part of the level is hell, then this trap room is purgatory. Just like Dante masters the art of writing, the players are expected to master the art of platforming and trap dodging if they want to help Lara ascend to her goal, paradise. Another level that was first a demo, no wonder why it should rank on this list. Think of Area 51 as a big, semi-linear dungeon, crowded with the toughest enemies in the Nevada section. And on paper, it's the second level with the highest number of enemies, 30 fucking 2. But given that the first position is held by a level with multiple paths, Area 51 could be argued to be the level with the highest number of enemies. Anyway, it's not just about the bad guys, it's also about the level design. It's deadly and quite confusing. I said semi-linear earlier because it involves a lot of backtracking and some active time events like when the player gets the rocket to lift off and quickly escape the flames it produces on launch. The diversity of traps and the puzzles are astounding because the location being Area 51, you never know what to expect. Unlike the section in London and in the South Pacific where you have in-game cinematics to give a general direction, the motion sensors, turrets, laser trip wires, electrified tracks, rolling laser traps, moving hooks, deadly drops, radiations. Area 51 is a nice catalogue of some of the most pernicious challenges Lara confronts in TR3, and these can be accounted for on the grounds that there is no final boss in the Nevada stage. Element 115 had a price, and if you thought Area 51 was some healthy walk, this price would be death. Now, here is a title I think is responsible for TR3 being my favorite game starring Lara Croft. Each player I met has had a different experience with this one, so you might wonder what it's doing here. Yes, why? Don't be impatient. Ganges River is known for having multiple paths, a long one and a short one, depending on whether you turn left or right, your fate will be decided. The difficulty is not that the level is extensive and that you may lose your way looking for the secrets or that it was built around the quad, the first vehicle Lara gets in this title. The controls may not be exactly intuitive and a brief tutorial if you're too lazy to look up the game manual would have been welcomed by many players. The real difficulty here is to complete the level 100% with all items and enemies killed. The Ganges River has the highest number of enemies in the game, but that's not why taking the two roads is difficult. It's difficult because of a single jump. That jump. The Ganges River already includes many of the elements we mentioned earlier, so completing it 100% is certainly no easy task, but it sure is a challenge and you might need at least 10 attempts to perform that jump perfectly, because it has to be perfect. No redemption for you if it's not. Now let's get serious. You might have expected the penultimate level of the main game to be ranking higher, I guess. Hmm? The Lost City of Tinas, one of my favorite levels in the whole franchise, is unique in many respects, but it's also quite difficult, though it's not the hardest thing, to be honest. A player defended that it was littered with the potential for death, that any step in the wrong direction would cause Lara to slip to her death. I believe the way the game was structured, the Lost City of Tinos is quite a refreshing but challenging penultimate level in comparison with previous titles. The first part of the level, before the food chain puzzle, is not very intuitive in terms of design. I had been looking for a lever I couldn't find because the sand environment was making me feel so uneasy. I'm not the only one having noticed this on the internet, not to mention the wasps, that will respawn indefinitely and the secrets making the best of the level length and breadth. Then there's those robust, aggressive, daunting, giant mutant creatures, then traps, a lot of traps, fire traps, underwater blades and crumbling rock traps. Even when you thought there wouldn't be any, there is, and there's even a maze, amazing. The liver room was also a pain in the ass if you ask me. What about you? What do you think? Not only does this level deserve the title of the scariest level in the game, it's also one of the most difficult. The layout gives the impression it's straightforward. 
it's just a room with three floors and some trials involving trap dodging, platforming, combat and exploration. Much, much, much exploration. And a couple of jump scares as well. The level only emphasizes verticality at specific moments like the whole diving part or when you have to find your way to progress forwards. The last secrets of the level after Lara dived into the freezing waters of Antarctica with less than 10 seconds to survive does reflect this. Level designers knew how to make you spend time around here, so they made the best of what they had in hand. The hard part is that the main puzzle was built around a specific vehicle and that was the minecart. This bloody minecart. It's actually one of the only thing in TR3 testing my patience due to its poor controls and lack of a tutorial. If you've never played this game before, actually even if you have, but not to the point you know it by heart, you will die. So then, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Many players consider Lootgate the most difficult level in the Tomb Raider series, but looking back at it, it's more bark than bite. It's kind of straightforward to be honest, but it's really hard to figure out. Though entire sections of the level can be skipped depending on the road you choose, it is still very difficult because it mixed different kinds of gameplay and the UPV is just among many of these. But it is quite the most frustrating as you sometimes got stuck for no reason. Getting down the Sphinx and figuring out where to go next are just two examples of what this level comprises and the final stage when Lara has to survive a succession of various traps and find her way through a shaft is a good illustration of how unforgiving this level is. Thought shooting harpoons was tough, especially in case you didn't have any left to get rid of the frogman. That's rough indeed, but did you ever forget to collect the key for the boiler room? Because if you did, there's a long way you have to go and backtrack to get it. You'd better take a deep breath before you do that and dry your eyes. There's worse coming in. Madubu, another name that appeared regularly during my research. If it was correct, the Madubu refers to a cultural object used as a charm and ceremonial item in Papua New Guinea, precisely in Kiwai Island. And the kind of things you can see there in terms of landscapes is exactly what you will get in this Tomb Raider level. The narrow branches of the deadly rapids, the way the natives are dressed, the ragged layout and multiple paths the level has, and finally the poison breathing, monitor lizards, resembling Varanus salvatori, an endangered species. Dara, come on! The most difficult part at this point is the kayak, and navigation might be a chore too. Finding your way is yet not the hardest thing, as this has been a staple in all Tomb Raider games, especially all gen Tomb Raider. There's also traps everywhere around you and a global feeling of unease each time you make a step forward. Everything in the environment wants to kill you. And if the rapids don't kill you, then those lizards will, eventually. This is a very challenging level and the kayak makes it even worse. But it's also a nice level to play because it's typical to Raider and the gameplay and game mechanics are kind of unique. Number 1 is Aldwych. The layout of the level is really confusing and many players recognized that this was the level that got them. I can rely to that because it got me too. Now there are two ways to be looking at it. A player wrote that it was her favorite level, that it had, I quote, a brilliant intricate layout with different routes and a fantastic atmosphere. Like the lost city of Tinas, Aldwych is considered by many a genuine Tomb Raider level. But for others, it's just a mess and a maze of sorts. A player noted that the objectives were unclear, that figuring out what to do next was the biggest trouble. The whole part with the old penny is an excellent illustration. The player is expected to use a ticket booth to obtain a ticket, but the booth looks like a part of the background. Not to mention the numerous puzzles, platforms and areas to explore every now and then. Another difficult stage in Aldwych was with the drill. It was like an early form of QTE because every move you make has to be perfect or almost if you want Lara to survive. And then you have to guess that you must go back there 
to obtain an item necessary to move forward in the story. Lutz Gate in comparison is difficult as a result of its long water section, but it is in fact way more linear than Old Witch. The fact that the players must keep backtracking all the time is probably why Old Witch is either hated or loved, but for all these reasons, it might just be the hardest level in Tomb Raider 3. Thanks for watching this video. You can either like or dislike this video either way. There is no distinction for YouTube. These are impressions and they will help me anyway make my video appear in search results. So if you don't like it, just leave. Thanks for watching. Again, I exult out. Bye. Thank you.